Hey everybody, we're going to solve absolute value equations and this is part two of me solving absolute value equations. So if you have not yet seen part one, I strongly suggest you do that so you have a little bit better idea of what's going on. So let's just jump right into it. So I have two absolute value of x minus one plus three equals 15. Now remember, absolute values are going to act like parentheses. So when we've been solving equations, solving algebraic equations, our goal is to get x by itself. But remember, the order in which we go about getting x by itself is we do PEMDAS backwards. We get rid of any addition subtraction with the x, then get rid of multiplication and division, then get rid of exponents, then work inside parentheses. So if we look at this first problem where we have a two absolute value of x minus one plus three equals 15, remember absolute values are like parentheses. So I cannot touch what's inside this absolute value until the very, very, very end. So I gotta get rid of on the outside of these, or these absolute values, I gotta get rid of the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division first on the side with x, then I can work on the inside. So if I wanna get rid of addition, subtraction first, that means I gotta get rid of this plus three. So minus three to both sides. So that's gonna give me a two absolute value of x minus one absolute value equals 12. Okay, so I got rid of the addition subtraction. Now we gotta get rid of multiplication division. So I have this two out front, then the absolute values. We can't distribute this. Absolute values you cannot distribute through. They're not like typical parentheses. They're close parentheses, they're not exactly the same. So I can't distribute it, but we, this is being multiplied here. So the opposite of multiplying is let's go ahead and divide each side by two. So then I have absolute value of x minus one equals six. And just like that, by removing the three and removing the two, this is looking awfully similar to the type of equations we're solving in part one. So now all that's left is the absolute value to get rid of it, we can do that, x minus 1, but then we take the right side and let's put a plus or minus on it. So then we get plus or minus 6. And then our last step, if you remember from part 1, is we're going to split this up into two equations because there's both a positive and a negative 6 here. So we're going to have x minus 1 equals 6 and x minus 1 equals negative 6. And we just solve these two basic equations and we will be finished. So we're going to add one here, add one. That will give us uh, x equals seven. And I can plug that in, check it, it will work. Uh, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to show that. Write one plus one plus one. We get x equals negative five. So that's probably about as complex as you can really see that we're going to see on the absolute value equations. So you still just pen bounce backwards. Remember, absolute values, they act as a parentheses. One more example for you. So on the bottom one, I have a negative 4, and then absolute value 2x minus 1 equals 20. So order of operations backwards. Can't touch the 2 or the 1 on the inside yet. Got to get rid of the 4 on the outside. So that is being multiplied. So the opposite of multiplication by negative 4 is divide each side by negative 4. So that will give me an absolute value of 2x minus 1 equals negative 5. Now, to get rid of the absolute values, we could do that. You would have 2x minus 1, but on the right side, you would have to do a plus or minus, and then a negative. It's starting to get crummy. That should look odd to you. Plus or minus negative 5. Remember, remember we can never have an absolute value equal a negative number. That will never happen. Absolute values always give you positive numbers. So there's going to be no way, no matter what I plug in for x, I'm never going to get negative 5 because the absolute value is only going to produce positive numbers. Only produce positive numbers. So like, if you tried to solve this out and say, well, what about 3? Well, then you have 2 times 3 minus 1. So you'd have 6 minus 1 and you have absolute value of 5 equals negative 5. But remember, absolute values, they always give you a positive number. So you get 5 equals negative 5. Those are not the same. No matter what you try for x, nothing will work 
this problem is a no solution. There's nothing we can do because we're never going to be able to take the absolute value of something and get a negative. That concludes this video that it was solving absolute value equations part two.